is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Alright, alright, alright. There he is, locked and loaded. Where you at? Where you hanging at? I'm at the uh, Charlotte Convention Center where the uh, AFCA, Football Coaches Association, uh, meetings are taking place. Been here since Sunday, chit-chatting with coaches and recruiting people. And right outside the building where there's like 75, 80 college football head coaches right now. Have they decided to just cancel the 2023 season and just <laughs> hand the championship to Georgia again? I think so. I think that's uh, inevitably what's going to happen here. Oh, I mean, uh, I don't I don't know how uh, anybody can be confident. Maybe just Alabama. Probably just Alabama uh, that they can uh, play on the field with Georgia. So, Shit, did you, did you see Nick Saban eating his liver right on the yeah. air? As David Pollack say, well, Georgia's taking over college football. Yeah. And Saban's like, you son of a bitch. The highlight of the night. That was the highlight that was of awesome. the night, to be honest. That was the only good that thing was, to come of last night. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome, dude. And I mean, it's not like David Pollack was lying. I mean, you know, they, yeah. they had to, to have the amount of people they had drafted last year. And then just reload and go back and dominate a season. That's impressive. Dude. Yeah. That's well, I mean, this is impressive. this is what happens when you stack, uh, you know, top five recruiting class after top five recruiting class after top five recruiting class, and then you get some 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 transfers, uh, one or two to come in that are elite players elsewhere that want to come play because they want to win a championship. Uh, that's what that's what happens. I mean. It, Look, it's a very small group of people that can honestly win the national championship. TCU had a great run, but as you and I talked about, it's hard to play two great games back to back. And they played their best game of their lives against Michigan and barely won. And uh, they walked into that game and were just completely outclassed. And what's funny was, you know, talking to a bunch of coaches and people yesterday before the game, we're all like, yeah, uh, Georgia's going to win decisively. And sure enough, it was the biggest blowout in bowl history. Yeah, man, 65 to 7, dude. I mm -hmm. felt like I was in Jacksonville again watching Marino's last <laughs> game. Bro. Reminded God. me of Miami Washington 65 7 in the Orange oh. Bowl. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that one yeah. was ugly too. That one was uh that was uh that was a bad moment there too for the Canes. All mm -hmm. right, so uh is uh Cristobal there? He is not. He is uh, sitting in front of his coaching staff right now as we speak in Coral Gables. There are some meetings today. Uh, you know, some coaches who were out on vacation that were told to come back in and uh, to have conversations. So we'll see what happens. As I told you last week, oh, on the show and people who tune in regularly to us, that I think there will be changes uh, to the staff in some regard. What those changes are, who they are, all those other things, we'll see. Uh, as we know, Mario uh, likes to operate uh, at a snail's pace when it comes to coaching. The NFL season um, just ended. Playoffs are set to begin. Movement is will start happening with NFL coaches, and there's a trickle down effect in college. And so I think uh, I think Miami fans have to just get used to the fact that when movement and change happens at Miami, it doesn't happen at, at a lightning uh, quick pace. Okay, and uh, are you expecting? Is it just one change or two, or or several? It's it's, it's hard to tell. Oh, to be honest, uh, the person okay. who, I, who I spoke with last week said, and, and I know. They would know, okay, because they uh, they're in charge of a lot of things over there. Um, my my understanding is there will be some changes now. Whether that's across the board, I think some of it depends on uh, whether guys really want to go or they negotiate a way to stay. You know, um, and and Mario is is okay with giving them another opportunity. So you know, it's just meetings. Things are going to happen. Conversations about changes are going to happen, and I think that's I think that's the way to sort of approach this thing that. It's 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 in the process. How are they attacking that that quarterback position for next year? What, do you, what what's going to be the breakdown there? Well, I mean, listen. You hope that Tyler Van Dyke is upright and healthy, right? Um, I don't think that they are afraid about any long term injuries to his shoulder, um, despite the fact that he looked pretty horrible at the end of the season throwing the football. I think the feeling was he was playing hurt, um, but it, there's no long term issues there with his shoulder, so. I think, uh, you know, they expect him to come back and be the guy and, and to play behind a better offensive line. And hopefully, if they're able to pull it off here, uh, get a receiver via the transfer portal that can be a true number one 
help stretch the field the way a Charleston Rambo did a couple of years ago and and help make this offense a lot better than it is. They haven't added a quarterback at all, right, so far in recruiting? Well, they, they signed Emery Williams, who is a uh, – he's a three-star kid out of the panhandle out of Milton, Florida, but he's one of these very underrated kids, uh, not very popular on the recruiting websites because he didn't go to a lot of camps. Uh, he was a kid that went to the Elite 11, and I think he finished third uh, among all the quarterbacks there in their little point system in terms of their skill set and everything else. So he may not have the high ranking, but the people who were at the Elite 11 – camp that quarterbacks and, and the, the quarterback gurus uh, that I spoke to spoke very highly of him and think that he's a quote-unquote steal for Miami well because I, I kind of feel like you know it's a lot like what I've been talking about with, with the Tua situation that mm -hmm. okay you know he had the injuries now this year it's been about concussions but right. it's about something with him unfortunately so next year you got to have a better plan B than Teddy B so right. I, I kind of feel the same thing for the Canes but right. I think you've got to have a better plan B than what you currently have right now because one kid's too raw and the other kid just, Jake, doesn't look like he has it, bro. So you mm -hmm. got to find somebody that if this kid doesn't fit, I don't know if this guy Gaddis is going to be here, if he's not or whatever, or who the next coordinator is. He's inheriting a quarterback. I think it's very important for them to also have a quarterback that they do feel fits whatever system that they are trying to implement well i agree with you i think you know that's a position that you that you still watch with a with a keen eye here i think the most important thing that you need to remember and we all have to get adjusted to this oh is the transfer window goes into the summer basically okay after post spring so there are going to be guys after spring who enter the transfer portal who say I, i'm not competing for a job here I'd like to change uh, addresses and go somewhere else. And the one thing you got to remember, too, for Miami is right now, Tyler Van Dyke is still the guy, and that's still the message that I think is out there in terms of the public, right? Other quarterbacks. If Miami didn't have a quarterback, if Tyler Van Dyke had gone pro and you had Jake Garcia and Jakari Brown, and those are the two guys coming back, there's no question in my mind that there would be uh, this would be a destination job for, for a lot of quarterbacks that, uh, that are proven and have, have done well. But that's not the case for Miami. And uh, I think depending on, on what happens here after spring football, we'll see whether or not they decide to add a quarterback to this roster. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, I hope that they're able to attack that the way they're supposed to, because they've got to do something about about that position just in case things don't mm -hmm. go well uh, with Tyler. All right. Recruiting wise. Yeah. Uh, apparently some uh, some new additions. Yeah, went out and, they, and right at the point of attack, right at the uh, line of scrimmage, you get a new center in Matthew Lee, a kid who was a three-year starter at UCF, I think the third highest rated starting center, according to Pro Football Focus. So, uh, Wait a kid, minute, hold, hold, hold on a second. He's leaving a championship program <laughs> like UCF. Who's to going, to the, who's going just, to the Power Five, right? Who's going I'm, to the I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 just, I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, understand this. Right, because we all know UCF is, you know, a multi-championship type program. They've right. won all these titles. They're elite of elite. Mm -hmm. And I'm just surprised that he would leave a championship program to come to Coral Gables. Stunning as it may be, oh, uh, the Canes Stunning. have gone out and Shut gotten themselves another another really good, experienced interior lineman who is going to start uh, right next to Javian Cohen, the uh, the Alabama. Great job by Manny. Uh huh. Must have taken a lot. Must have taken a lot to convince him to leave UCF. <laughs> well, this is the one thing that I think Miami fans can certainly get used to. They're going to have better offensive alignment, right? Like we said that we said that was going to happen. Now it's finally <laughs> happening, right? Like it's, they're a year in, and everybody's like, "Yeah, I want to go play for Mario and Alex Mirabal, right? I want to go play for those two guys." And so now they're just getting the talent in here, and uh, they got to show out. I think. Look, they're going to be a better team up front. Does that mean they're going to win 9, 10, 11 games? I still don't believe that. I think they still need to get a wide receiver. Oh, they yeah, the need... weapons. Are, yes, there, exactly. there, there's the tight end, Elijah Royo, coming off of injury. He's taking over for Mallory. He's got a lot of talent. I like Jaleel Skinner. Jaleel Skinner still needs to add another 20 pounds to his body uh, so he can actually stay healthy and do the things you need him to do. So there's areas that they, they have to progress, but the offensive line will be better. And then the, yesterday they went out and they got this uh, defensive tackle who is also a three-year starter. From Purdue and Purdue, if you remember, I think they uh, made the pretty Big good. Ten championship game. Had a pretty, no, good, pretty defense. good, man. Yeah, so 
you know, they uh, a, a kid who's 6'2", 280, he's bigger than the kid they got from Georgia State who's six foot 270, more of a speed rusher, rotation guy that comes in and will probably spell a, a Leonard Taylor in the pass rush. Uh, but, you know, this guy will start and replace Daryl Jackson uh, at the defensive tackle position. And so right up front, again, Mario addressing the offensive and defensive lines. And, oh, by the way, if you watched last night's game, I mean, <laughs> I know Georgia has Brock Bowers and they got some receivers and, and all that, but, you know, up front is where it starts, man. You got to really yeah, be no, dominant I, if, if yeah, you're going to win. Yeah, and, and that's what I love. If, if you beef up the O-line and the D-line, that is going to make your life so much easier as an offense, period. You you're know, right. so and, and even as a defense also. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm with you all the way. I love that, and they shouldn't have that much trouble getting some of these skill position guys. I think, I guess the next level is showing that you have a sexy offense, right? And then, yeah. and then I think it, they really start pouring in, correct? Yeah, you you got to get to 30 points a game here. If you can do that, you get back into the 30s, and you and you have some playmakers. You have some some of these receivers make some big plays for you, and uh, you know, the running backs are you're averaging close to 200 yards a game rushing. You can you can start to attract people to come play for your program that are elite skill players. And, and again, they picked up two good receivers in this recruiting class, but they're undersized guys. You need the 6'4", 6 6'3", 6 you know, 200 pound outside threat that's going to really, you know, NFL. expand your expand your field. Right. And expand you need an NFL limit. receiver, bro, is what you're saying. You, you, you need one of those guys and, and you need a tight end, you know, that that does what Brock Powers does in the middle of the field and just is a disruption, you know? Yeah. Will Mallory, I love the kid. Will, Will Mallory's a great kid as far as person, um, but he was kind of an average tight end at Miami, you know? He was he was okay. He, he was, did a good job last year. I got to give him some he, love. He, he played well. He got, he got better than he did the year before, but there, I'm saying there were so many ups and downs. He was right. not Jeremy. He wasn't Jeremy Shockey. He was No, no, he's not special. He, no, but he was right. solid. He, he solid. was a solid, solid kid, and and those are shoes. It's not easy to be one of those guys in college football. He's There's Alfredo. Ro of... He's Alfredo Roberts, bro. He was correct. Solid. You know correct. What I'm saying? You know, you want well, a special no guy, but you want a special yeah. guy in the middle of the field. Right. Yeah. You know. Of course, he wasn't a soldier. Right. He was, but he was. He was. You know, he was strong overall. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, what else you got going uh, over in the athletic this week? So, uh, Canes fans can follow you and subscribe to the athletic and support well, just... me. Yeah, I just did a huge roster breakdown, came out yesterday, um, you know, breaking down all the uh, additions and, and giving people an idea of what the roster looks like from a scholarship standpoint and position by position, because I know uh, everybody looks at it. Who did we get? Who did we? So if you if you have questions, what, what does the roster look like? What do they need? I have that broken down for you. And then uh, when I when I get back, I'm going to finish my uh, my in-state Florida recruiting uh, mailbag. I have some questions to answer there. Um, Cormani McLean will be, uh, I think, making an announcement on Sunday, the 15th. So we'll have some I'm news with that. I'm terrified of that kid. I'm I am terrified. Too. I'm completely terrified of that kid now. I hate when we have to go through all of this. <laughs> it always ends up becoming a bust. God, I hope he's good. Because, um, man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what we got coming, man. Uh, I, I got a, another recruiting confidential on the ACC uh, you know, some, some stuff from t this, these last couple of days, hanging out, talking to a bunch of, uh, coaches, the FSU people were happy to see me that I'll tell you that. Oh, they, they love the attention now. They, uh, they're happy to talk to the guys from the athletic now. So there you go. Uh, and, and, they some... and they probably follow the gridiron too. <laughs> they, they do. They do. That's it. So they, they see the gridirons out there covering everything. We'll try to include the national champion USC, UFC, uh, UCF Knights uh, into and the next round year. Before. Next year, yeah. we're gonna try to get them in there, and I'll yeah, be a yeah. little bit more. I'll be a little more well-rounded in all the state teams. I, even when USF wins a game or two, I'll, I'll be sure to talk about them too for you. You see, really, USF and everything is Levitt <laughs> yes. coming back. <laughs> By the way, did Andre that. Johnson have an offspring? Because maybe we could use it, you know, because mm -hmm. freaks of all freaks, right there, bro. That was like there. There are some incredibly, uh, incredibly talented guys on that Georgia roster and that's what it made me think of it Andre Johnson like they they had like 20 Andre Johnsons out there just size speed the whole package it was crazy yeah man god Andre jo <laughs> I wish Andre Johnson would have ended up on an awesome team in the NFL he can you imagine had... can you imagine if he would have gotten drafted uh by the Colts and played with Peyton Manning and not not the Texans or right you know just any any quarterback what he would have they would have said he was the best receiver he would have Orleans. 
New yeah, Orleans, Drew they Brees. will play with Drew, Drew Brees. Any of these other teams that that were that were just that needed a, a, a true number one, and he would have been phenomenal. And they, they, by the end of that career, they would have said he's one of the five best receivers in the history of the game. Absolutely. They don't say it, they don't say it now because, you know, the, the, the number. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, but I, but let me tell you, he reminds me a lot of Irving Fryer. Mm -hmm. Irving Fryer had the shittiest quarterbacks in New England for years. Yeah. And he would catch a thousand yards every year, dude. And then yep. he came to Miami and he had like Pro Bowl years because he had Marino. And then he went to the Eagles and he had another good quarterback and he had another Pro Bowl year. You know what I mean? He was Can you like imagine a, Andre yeah, Johnson with Donovan McNabb back in the day? Right. Holy cow. Right. That's I just what thought I'm of saying. another. <laughs> that's that's the worst thing that happened, to Andre Johnson, because I think his Statra as a player would have become mm -hmm. bigger instead of just us that talking you and I are talking about it because right. we saw him up front and we know how freaking special that guy was that mm -hmm. very few players in the entire history of the NFL have more talent and are as good as Andre Johnson at wide receiver. Yep. And it just brother, you played with Matt Schaub. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And, and and he still ended up being the Texans' all-time leading receiver, right? So I mean, yeah, of course, he's a monster. He's yep. freaking awesome, awesome as a human being, and awesome as a football player. Because my he was one of my wife's students right. over Miami at High, Mi yeah. Miami High. Because my my wife, her first thirteen years, she taught at her alma mater, Miami High, before we moved out west. Him and Roscoe uh, Parrish were a great tandem to watch back in the day at the high school yeah. levels. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Roscoe uh, Roscoe was also a uh, stingery. Was a stingery, right? Yeah, he was yeah. the quarterback. He was the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Was it Nigel something the head coach? Nigel Dunn, who uh, ended up going to New Orleans and winning a state championship in order with James Coley, who was his offensive coordinator. That's right. That's right. So uh, and they, and they had Dwayne Bow and uh, and, and a cast of uh, of guys that went on to play in the league. So. Yep, no doubt. All right, follow him on Twitter and Manny underscore Navarro. Catch his work there at The Athletic. Manny, as always, thank you, my friend. Be uh, safe in your travels. Thank you, brother. See ya. You got it. There you go. Great stuff, as always. Great insight from Manny Navarro and our Canes where Miami Hurricanes report at 2511 South University Drive in Davie. I don't know for how long, right, because they're going to move a couple stores down, so it won't be 2511. They're moving to a, a bigger – I mean, it's like – They've been with me for years now, for over a decade. But I'm so proud because they've gone from a warehouse where they were at to the store out in Davie, and then they grew to a bigger store in Davie, and now they're going to grow to an even bigger store now, which is just absolutely awesome. How Brett actually likes to move every couple of years is beyond me because I would hate move. I did that once with my, you know, where I live now. And where we used to live, oh, my God, moving is hell. I told my wife, I don't really ever want to move again, even though I, I think we'll probably move one more time. But, uh, God, I dread it. I dread it. I really dread it. Whew. Anyway, remember, you can go to caneswear.com, get anything practically with the Canes logo on it. And they've got Miami Dolphins, Miami Heat, Inter-Miami gear, Marlins gear, and what else? The Florida Panthers. All kinds of stuff. And when you order over $99, you will get free shipping. Caneswear.com.